Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. We're going to do a little quick craft along with me before I head out. The stores are finally open again <laughs> and I have not been thrifting in like two and a half weeks. So, so I'm going out thrifting today. Actually, one of the things I'm hoping to find in little crafty sections is I'm thinking I want something behind here. It's been suggested that maybe something you know, maybe a, a mat behind or a lacy, something lacy. Like this is too big, but if I could find a tiny gold, I want gold. I don't know. I'm feeling the gold. So I don't know. I have this beautiful lace that uh, came in happy mail from my crafty crush. Hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that it will strike me this morning what needs to go behind uh this lovely little baby Jesus. In the meantime, I want to get these end papers glued in so it can dry while I'm out. So let's get started on that. And um I always use Fabri Tac. I find especially if you want smooth, beautiful smooth and papers. Fabri-Tac is the way to go. It doesn't buckle when the glue dries. These funny things that I I use these all the time to hold down things. They were actually from a embroidery banner. I don't know what they're called. They hang, they hang up. People hang them up on a wall. Oh, there I'm going. I'm at a screen. They hang them up on a wall, and it was lovely hand embroidered, which I of course cut up <laughs> nothing's too precious <laughs> uh, but these things are actually really nice and heavy because they're pure metal and I just find that they hold down papers <laughs> quite well so I'm going to use them on this side so that I can work on this side so we're just going to do a few little things I am going to um, I'm also going to poke my holes for in Felicia so uh this is the, I, I fortified this with cardboard, so usually I have front and back written. Front arrow. Usually I have front and back. Oh, I, I already did it for this one. Okay, back is already inscribed. It wouldn't be, um, these end papers are a little bit easier to differentiate because, as you can see here, the original end papers had rounded corners on the two outside corners. So I can see here where I have rounded the corners. Well, come on, don't be doing that to me. Thank you. So that's this book is not so difficult, but as I've mentioned before, sometimes the publisher, when they've glued the original end papers in, they might be slightly askew. They might be slightly um, not symmetrically centered, like balanced. It's hard to explain. And until you come across it working with an old book, um, and then you'll go, oh boy, I know what she's talking about now. And here's where I decide, do I want to put my glue on this or do I want to put my glue on this? And I think I want, and it changes for different things. I think I want to glue on here and then do that one edge on, on the paper. I'll show you what I'm talking about. My brain is going and my mouth can't keep up with it. Ugh. Okay. You stay out of my way. Now here's where I'm actually going to, I want to make sure that this end. Uh, I find Fabri-Tac um, 
smushes very well. It sort of slides out and with a nice firm hand, you can, um, you can squeeze it to where you want it to go, <laughs> which is nice. And you can slide it around if you haven't quite got it where you want it. And that's why I don't worry too much if I don't have um, an even application because I know with Fabri-Tac, my fingers and thumbs can do the rest. See how it's um, squeezing out a bit here and I just wipe that up as I go. And make sure that those are well applied. And here's where, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm sort of rolling my thumb forward to squeeze that loose, that fabric tack that's underneath. You can mush it like, I don't know, toothpaste. And see, there's some coming out there. And now that I'm comfortable knowing what fabric tack does with various papers and fabrics and and such you can use that to your advantage like I am doing here I didn't have to worry that I had it completely applied the way I would have with white tacky glue or with art glitter glue I would have made sure I had right out to the edge maybe even used a paintbrush but I find with Fabri-Tac because it has mushability <laughs> There's a technical term for you, <laughs> mushability. It, it will work with you. There we go. And a few of you have mentioned, and I agree, don't put anything on the end papers. Like I was wondering about putting a library pocket or but you know what a catholic missile wouldn't have had a library pocket in it these were personally owned are personally owned i know that they're still in use okay let's do this one these aren't working very well today and i want that out of my way you stay over here thank you all right so front no, 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 front there. That's you, front. All right, so here we go again. I'm going to do most of the gluing on the book here. And then I will glue, put my glue on that side so that I know, because I don't know where it's going to meet up with that right now so and i'm not going to worry about it again i know that it's going to be happy to work with me and mush out to where i need it to mush out so i'm not terribly worried about precision coverage for the edges i just want to make sure that there's lots of coverage I want this to hold well. Make sure there is enough there. Okay, there's enough there to be mushable. Now I'm going to apply to this edge here. But again, I know I'm going to mush it out, so I'm not too worried about coverage because my thumbs are going to do the work. All right. So let's marry up these. Uh-oh. Where's my little wet cloth? There you are. I want that handy because I know that there's going to be 
some gooshing out more technical terms so this is you can see it's quite slidey still and that's okay that's a nice thing because it gives you time to get it right Now, if this was, if I had covered this with fabric and I really wanted a tight fit, I would put um, bulldog clips around the edge. But I'm not concerned about that. It's already extremely flat and I believe it's quite well applied. And I think we're good to go, just like that. There we go. All right, let's let go. There you check the back. Lovely, lovely. All right, that's all I'm going to do for now on um, my Catholic all sorts because I um, I'm going thrifting later, and that'll give uh, the fabric tuck. Plenty of time to dry. I am going to get out my trusty rock and give that a little bit of weight while it dries. <laughs> all these technical equipment I use are rock, <laughs> and I bet you all do too. <laughs> I do have bricks. I like bricks for their um, for the flat side. That, that comes in handy when I've been um, making little things like this and I have used you know, white tacky glue or a glue stick. Then it's nice to just stick them all underneath a brick. Get them nice and flat while they dry. Oh, Nancy, smart on saving these lids. Oh my goodness, smart. Uh, yeah, anyhow. Needless to say, I've already made use of that one. So my, I'll show you one of my, uh, my smart ass moves. Oh, pardon, pardon me. My smart aleck moves. <laughs> Jeepers. A few, few videos ago, I said, oh, I only like to glue my lace. <laughs> and uh, because sewing machine can chew apart your paper. And then I, I got kind of smart alecky. And I actually had some good success sewing, sewing the lace on. Isn't that cute? Just taking it slow and, and sewing it on. I did this yesterday after I turned off the camera. There's another one where I sewed it on. And I was so happy with it. Oh, that's going to be, I call these a Nancy pocket. When you do a little folded tiny doily and make it into a pocket. That's officially the term as a Nancy pocket. Anyhow, I even sewed uh, this lace. If you recall, it was supposed to dye and come out brown, and it came out mauve, and I'm quite all right with that. Anyhow, this morning, I, I, my, I got too big for my britches, and I put a little light bit of glue to hold this in place, and then I decided, oh, I'm going to sew it on, and yeah, this paper... Um, was not having anything to do with that. So I'm still going to use it. Nothing gets wasted. And here we go. That's coming off. What? I don't want to lose as much paper as I 
can I want to hang on to? Let's see if I can do this. Fingers crossed. It's always by guess and by golly, right? That's how you learn things. Ah, there we go. All right. All right, so I'll find something else to do with that. Maybe. We'll see. I try my best to make sure nothing goes to waste. And now we've got a fresh edge. Fortunately, I only lost maybe, what, an eighth, an eighth of an inch there. And I'll make that up because I will use... Um, I'll use a wider waist, uh, wider lace on it. I'll have to look for that later since I am going to glue. All right. Back in, Roses. I will do you later. I want to get, I want to get my holes hooked. All right. Four, five, three. Nancy Pocket, two, one. All right, where's my cam? This is my signature sewing cam. I keep all my stuff in here um, that I need for sewing in signatures. So there's my tomato. That I use and upholstery thread. I'm not going to sew yet. I'm just going to get these set up and poked. get started here oh I want this all I was using it earlier this week all right so let's get started here these are my favorite paper clips for aligning papers oh you're little all right here's a little trick that I do. I choose a washi tape that I don't, I'm not all that much in love with. And then what I do is, because I want this centered, I'll tape it into place with that next page. And that way I know it'll stay where it wants to stay, where I want it to stay, pardon me. And then I make sure that I, for the most part, have my papers centered. They're not precise uh, size-wise. Oh, oh, come. And I like that. I'm not going for perfection. I'll go to a bookstore and buy a perfect book. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for one that looks like somebody sat at their desk and worked on a book. All right, there we go. Oh, you're trying to let go. No, you don't. And then what I do is I get one of my great big paper clips and I put one at the top and one at the bottom. There we go. All these ready. I want, I want that this way. I want you that way. Since you're in the center, you should really have a little showcase. Now, I won't tape this one down 
because I know it's big enough that my paper clip is going to hold it firmly. These big paper clips, see it's it's quite well in place. So this one I won't worry about taping it down, but little things that might try and give me a hard time, yeah, I'll just temporarily tape them down with washi tape and um, I'll pull the washi tape off after it's safely sewn in. Masking tape will do the same thing, but sometimes I do find masking tape will pull. <laughs> Look at that, there's the fold. <laughs> Cheapers. Okay. So you're there. vintage and I will tape this down simply because sometimes um, vintage paper I don't know what the term is I the only way I can describe it hold on I got an itchy nose uh, I'm gonna kiss a fool um, oh sweet I'll be home for a few hours all right um, I find I don't know whether it's because it's moist or sometimes it just I don't know feels a little bit mushier than younger paper I don't know anyhow so I just want to be careful I want to take care with that card because it is old and I want it safely tucked into its new home there we go. number three. Oh, number four you're the one roses you gave me a hard time all right so this envelope Oh, here, let me show you what I did with this envelope. I do this quite often. Uh, Infelicia is not wide enough for me to save that whole uh, window. It would have stuck out. I don't mind doing these off center if I can get the whole window in, but I can't do it with Infelicia. So I just folded it in half. But what I will do on this side, because it's going to go into a signature, is I took my scissors and I cut the flap down the center. And then I just maybe did like a tiny little V. Otherwise, you'll fight with it against the next page that's here. And then I rounded the ends. And that gives you a, that gives you a, an envelope on either side. But I'm going to tape it in place. I want it centered. Sorry if this is not in the center of the camera screen, but I'm working here. Oh, I like when you get some nice splashy coffee or tea rings. Right now, you're not quite centered on the even hold. There we go. my lesson on the roses page because look how cute this lace is that I put along the edge of this one and because it says first love I thought it was perfect because it's got little hearts on it and flowers just like this but I am not going to try and sew that that's on nice and strong it's on with Fabri-Tac it's not going anywhere so I'm just going to leave well enough alone 
choose where you can sew and choose to leave well enough alone. Oh, here's our little envelope that we're going to sew into the signature. So I have to decide which way I want it to open. Do I want it to open this way? And I think I do. It's artistic uh, license. I'm the artist, so I have the license. <laughs> and I'm right-handed. So I would prefer, if this were my book, I would prefer to have the envelope that way so that I can open it. So here's what you do. You get out your washi tape and tape it in place. So that it stays put and envelopes I add a little bit more tape to I find because they are an odd shape one side is heavier than the other side they want to flop around and there can be quite a bit of swearing involved with the sewing so I do use a bit more washi tape I'll reuse the washi tape as well. Usually, I'm, I cleaned my desk up, usually off the edges here I have old pieces of washi tape because you actually do want them to be not very sticky. You want to be able to peel it off without damaging, especially old papers. I don't mind if they're only a little bit sticky. I just want them to make things behave and then I want them to peel off when I want them to. I think one of the reasons why I like doing five signature books is I only have 10 of these great big huge paper clips. Someday if I find them, oh, I'd be so happy if I find more. I love these big paper clips. Now I know, that I can see already that this one is going to try and give me grief. So I am going to hold it down with some more paper clips. I just find for me, the paper clips allow me to work with a flat signature better than the clamps like um, clamps like that. I find that that triangle, the wedge shape, gets in my way of keeping everything flat and symmetrical. All right, all right. Where's my knee pad? My gardener's knee pad. I love it. Now, here's Hugh, but where is. Oh, here it is. This is how I marry up my sewing with So for me, you might be looking at this and going, Catherine, it's not the same length. And I know that. Um, I'm at the point now where I can pretty well eyeball when I've got things centered in my signature and I'm comfortable with that. So for these, when I stick it inside, I'm just gonna look at the top and the bottom and make sure that I've got it centered like that. So. Oh, we might as well get these done. So I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, six holes. I'm going to sit down. Jeepers, we're almost at 30 minutes already. I wonder if I need to do the rest of this. Maybe I'll poke these holes on another one. I pre-poke my holes for my, for my fabric. This is going to be boring for you to watch. Maybe I'll just do a little bit and then I'll do the rest off camera. 
So just wherever the lines cross, I poke. Come on. Sometimes you hit what is probably a glob of glue that was in between. And it'll try and give you grief. Come on. There we go. I'm not going to do this whole card. But I will show you what else I do. I find that I don't like... Let me see if you can see. Because I poked through from this side that way, it's almost like it's almost like a little, I don't know, blemish or a little pimple. So what I will do, and I find that that gets in my way of finding the holes when it's time to sew in the signatures. So what I will do is I press those down and then I hold it up to the light and I will go in front to back and get that uh, hole more easily to locate, more easy to locate when it's time to sew in my signatures. Because that's my worst thing, I think, about sewing in signatures is when I can't marry up. Oh, sorry, I'm jiggling things. When I can't marry up the holes on this card with the holes in my signatures, and it just is so frustrating. So I will, but I find if I hold it up to the light, I can see where I put my hole. And then I can go through and make sure that those holes are easy to find, easy to get your needle through, and makes for a more pleasant sewing in experience. So I'm going to finish this. <coughs> Maybe I'll do one of these right now before we go. There's no need to watch me poke holes in five signatures. I'll do this one because this is unusual with the uh, with the envelope in it. So what I do is I just make sure that my poking hole template, I don't know what the term is, poking hole template, is um, centered and that that's the top. And then I marry up my needle with that seam And then I push my finger down there so that I know it's going to come right out there. Hold it in place. And I stick a, come on, let go, a corsage pin through the hole. And then I actually stick the corsage pin into my gardener's thing. And that will hold it in place for the rest of the time that I'm poking holes. And I put my finger on that. That makes sure that it comes out. I know everyone's different. Some people are probably going, why aren't you using this in the, in the crease of a phone book? And I've tried that. And it works pretty well. But I found for me, I was still getting holes, these holes. Some of them were still either popping up one side or popping out the other side. They weren't dead straight into that crease. And for me, for however way it is that my brain works and my hands work in coordination, this is my best way of making sure that my holes are right in that fold dead center. There we go. All right, so I've got my corsage pins holding those. I've got my six holes that are married up to the six holes that will be in there, or actually that way, and we're good to go. All right, I'm going to finish these off camera, and then I'm going thrifting, and maybe, if I'm lucky, I will be doing a thrift haul um, later on this afternoon. Well, thanks for visiting. Thanks for hanging around with me. Happy January 2nd. Uh, January 2nd. This was my my first mother-in-law's uh, birthday. Actually, is her birthday. She's alive and, and doing quite well. So, uh, happy birthday to Grandma Lil. <laughs> Take care. Hopefully, we'll talk later. Bye.